Hey, Social 10, I just thought I'd say a couple more words about the genocide in conclusion. Um, I hope that that little video uh, wasn't overly gruesome for you, but I think it's important for you to recognize some of the tragedy that went on there, both in the form of brutal mass killing, but also the use of rape as a form of uh, genocide as well. So really a terrible experience. And, and I guess some of the aftermath, obviously like the genocide itself is a legacy of historical globalization, but uh, Rwanda is, is doing fairly well today. In fact, I just read a post the other day that said Rwanda is one of the safest places to travel in Africa today. However, there's still a lot of scars that exist there and there's still um, some pain that exists between these two uh, once non-warring tribes, tribes that used to, to get along quite well. Um, some of the legacies that have been left behind there still is that there are many uh, that were involved in the genocide, uh, uh, many Hutu men and women that were involved in the genocide that are still at large and, uh, and free to kind of continue roaming the earth and doing whatever they want to do. Uh, many uh, of these uh, Hutu men specifically that engaged in this genocide, some of the leaders fled to neighboring countries like the Congo and began uh, wars there. And um, when you guys, if you guys kind of remember, we talked about uh, in the beginning of the year, we talked about some of the coltan mining and some of the other precious metal mining that's going on in the Congo and some of the illegal actions and militias that are going on in the northern part of the Congo. Well, some of these militias and some of these mines are being run by former leaders of the Hutu uh, that carried out that genocide that have gone uh, unpunished for their crimes. So there's still a lot of uh, a lot of nasty stuff going on in Rwanda and area that uh, can date back to 1994 and that genocide. But uh, the couple of things that I did want to kind of tell you about um, is Canada's involvement. Canada actually had a very, uh, I guess, an important role to play in the peacekeeping mission that went on there. Canada was sent uh, in by uh, the UN to engage in peacekeeping, which essentially, if you don't know what that means, that means that we don't engage in actual warfare. Uh, guns and, and whatnot aren't used unless... Uh, they're used in defense. Essentially, Canada was supposed to be there to stand as a referee between the Hutu and the Tutsi that were in the midst of a civil war starting in 1991. And the leader of that, I guess the general of that peacekeeping mission was uh, a Canadian from Quebec named Romeo Dallaire. He's uh, a three-star general, quite a famous Canadian who has written many books since about Canada's behavior in that and what the UN's responsibility should have been. So Canada is part of a organization known as the UN, the United Nations, and the job of the UN is to keep peace around the world and ensure uh, we maintain security and stability around the world. Now, many of those that are leaders in the, the security aspect of the UN are Western countries such as the United States, uh, the United States um, and Great Britain and France. And some of the arguments that Romeo Dallaire says is that, uh, is that the UN did not do enough to ensure the safety of those that were uh, in uh, in Rwanda. So um, just a couple of quick things about Roma Dallaire's experience is um, he actually began right away in early 1994 to discover that there was a lot of um, aggression going on amongst the Hutu population towards the Tutsi. And he even actually noticed that, they, that there were groups of, of Hutu that were stockpiling weapons, specifically weapons like machetes and clubs. And he alerted the UN and said, I think that we're going to have a genocide on our hands. Um, we're, we're ripe for one. And it seems as though that the people, the Hutu men uh, are, are angry enough that uh, we could see a genocide go down. And he asked the UN for permission to use force to go and take and seize some of these stockpiles of weapons. He was denied that opportunity. Um, and then shortly after, before the genocide took place, uh, a number of Belgium troops that were also peacekeepers under Dallaire were attacked and slaughtered uh, by some Hutu militia. And so again, he asked the UN for the ability to use, uh, to use force to protect the rights of the Tutsi people and protect the rights of the soldiers. And it was that moment that he was told that, uh, that the Canadian troops and other peacekeepers were to evacuate. And so in that evacuation process, Dallaire witnessed 
uh, the genocide taking place and he was completely helpless to do anything if he was to obey orders, which he did. And so um, you guys are going to watch a little video where uh, Dallaire goes back and has an interview. Um, back, I think this is back in like 96 or 97. He has an interview and he kind of tells of some of his experiences. And then you guys are going to uh, read a little quote from him um, about his thoughts on the, the Rwandan genocide. Um, now, it's important for you guys to understand a con, a, some context here. In 1994, while uh, Dallaire and the Canadians were peacekeeping in Rwanda, there was another uh, peacekeeping mission that Canada was supposed to be involved in in a country known as Yugoslavia. Now, you might have heard that word before. Yugoslavia is no longer a country. It's dissolved into many different countries, including countries like Yugoslavia is now like, I think there's like six countries. It's like Herzegovina, Bosnia, uh, Croatia, Serbia. There's a bunch of countries that have, have broken out of this, of, of the, the Yugos, uh, of former Yugoslavia. But in the 90s, Yugoslavia was actually going through a genocide as well. There were a number of, of tribal, I guess not tribal, but uh, there was kind of a racial or a, an ethnic group known as Serbians who were slaughtering non-Serbian people in, in, uh, uh, in, in the area known as Bosnia, which, is part of, which was part of Yugoslavia. And Canada was sent there as peacekeepers, but in the long run, Canada actually ended up getting involved in a full-on war to stop Serbians from, uh, from gaining power in Yugoslavia and to stop the spread of this genocide. So Canada was very involved in a hands-on uh, offensive mission to stop a genocide in a European country. But when it came to Rwanda, Canada was sent home and told that we were to do nothing. And so I think in the perspective of Dallaire, he has some things to say about this. And, uh, and I want you to kind of analyze some of the words that he says. Um, I, I quoted a little, I have a little quote in your assignment that you're going to read. And you're going to kind of give me a what you think Romeo Dallaire's perspective is when he compared uh, what, what went on in uh, Rwanda versus what went on in Yugoslavia. Okay, and so that is kind of your assignment. Watch the little video um, on Romeo Dallaire. He's kind of one of the heroes of mine. I think he was a really good guy who tried to do a lot to, uh, uh, to hold Canada more accountable for the fact that we did nothing, uh, but more specifically, holding the UN more accountable to, to becoming a, um, an institution that does a better job at actually policing the world rather than kind of standing by and letting things happen. Um, and I guess he kind of lost faith in the institution of the UN in the long run. So um, anyway, th that's what I wanted to say. I hope that that made sense to you. I hope that you um, have learned something from this assignment. Um, and one of the great tragedies of the colonization of Africa and the legacies that were left behind there um, we're just talking about Rwanda, but we could actually look at almost any country in Africa and see how it was negatively touched by colonization. Um, and we will. We're going to look at uh, South Africa next, but I think that uh, that will do for Rwanda today. Um, for the next assignment, you guys are going to be doing a little bit of a source analysis on the topic of Rwanda, but um, I hope that you have learned something today.